So this um, needs an end position, which is a simulation position. So I think between <laughs> these two things, um, we can then tell the renderer to show itself as projected position. Just a perfect circle right now, but look at that. It worked. So, yeah, that worked. Great. So, that is the quickest and dirtiest way to do it. It looks like these particles are still rendering through objects, though. Give me just a second to clarify that. It could just be a gigantic box sphere location, one and a half meter sphere with only the top of the sphere. Great. That is a static mesh, but I'm pretty confident that if I was to um, pretty confident that if I was to get this guy and So those are sticking to him. The only trick is they're sometimes rendering. Uh, you may need to turn these off when they face the other way. That's all. Uh, give me just a sec. Do you know how far away the camera is going to be? Yeah. Okay, and is the camera moving? Because <laughs> mm. taking this general approach may work. Because, yeah, see how they're kind of doing the swimming around that we spoke of. Yeah. Uh -uh. No, it is. Um, I just need to be careful. So yeah, what I'm to be clear, what I'm doing here is this is, you know, the hanging particulates system. Uh, it's just a generic noisy looking field of particles, right? All I'm doing is I've made a new Niagara node called check collision along path. And what that does is that traces from its current position into the middle of the mesh and then wherever it hits 
it says um, <clears throat> wherever it hits it says um, save that hit location as one as something called projected position and then what it's doing is I'm at the very end instead of uh, putting the particle at the regular position and binding its position to projected position. So if you were to look at my screen, if I was to turn this back to default, so what the particles are actually doing is this. See how we got these particles just kind of floating in space? But what they're seeming to do is they're tracing into the middle and then it's doing this one instead, which ends up being a dot in this environment or in this environment here. Now, if you want them circling, we could potentially be a little cheesy and do a, um, uh, you could do this as a vortex position. So that's a bit quick. Now, the other the other way we could approach this is instead of using a GPU particle, might be able to use a CPU particle to do it. Give me just a second. Um, Collision query response. No, sorry, there may be a way to do it on the CPU, but I'm just not sure what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Uh, give me just one moment. Sets extra stuff for the CPU, which passes it through. Yeah, I think GPU is going to be the quickest way to do it. So we got pretty complicated if I go down this path. Uh, yeah, so potentially keeping that one as, as GPU. Um, uh, the other, yeah, you'll also want to check the surface normal. Oh. And use that to determine if you're potentially hitting a back face, which would be bad. Uh, so you may need to do like a dot product on it. Okay, a dot product of the trace direction with the impact normal. Uh, that should help tell you. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you should end up with if you go down that pathway. Is. So 
can set the force to be a little less, like 20. That. It's not perfect, um, but it should do the trick for what you want. Biggest trick is it will fall apart if you get closer. Okay. Um, I think that'll do it. The yeah, you may need to tweak some of these variables because it seems like every now and then I'm getting scene depth collisions here that don't make any sense. Um, I'm not sure what's causing those ones. But do you understand the principle of what's of what's going on here? Like to so the projecting is is the easiest part because what you can do is I've made a scratch pad node and the projection is literally saying there's a thing that we can do called scene depth test which says starting at this position and ending at this position what is the position that we hit between the two of them does that make sense so draw a line from this position to this position, and if you hit something, tell me where that is, which is the impact position. I did. It's doing it against the entire world right now. So at the moment, I'm create. You'll need, if you want to go this route. Um, again, if you if you look at what this actually is. We're going to turn the renderer back to be the particles position. It's actually, it's that. And these are what's tracing against it. So you would need to have a reasonably tight fitting um, mesh to do it. Or you could spawn them on the surface of the mesh and then send them off and around, but they're not actually going off and around, if you know what I mean. So remember the one that I did in my... Um, so okay, if I if I wanted, I could also do this. If I got my um, when the particles spawn, I could uh, re recreate what's called mesh me mesh reproduction. Um, so if I was to get my um, I'm getting a compile error. Sorry, one sec. There it is. So if I wanted to, I could spawn them on um, the character. So now they're actually spawning on him, which is going to keep them a lot closer to, to me. That vortex force is pulling them all in. Let me just... And let's do high strength, uh, low frequency, and add some drag. Oh, we already have drag. It was a bit too low frequency. Okay, so now they're spawning on him. Um, and the trace, if I, if I set this back to preview the projected position. So you probably, you'll need to add some little controls and you also probably want to use alignment facing as well um, because these particles are always facing me right now. So 
what that results in is um, like you can see those circles are always facing me. If I was to go to my sprite renderer, sorry, my, if I was to go to my that scratch pad that I made, which was just this, um, we could save the impact normal, which saves the direction of the um, shaves, saves the direction of the surface that we're touching. And I think if we save that surface thing. Um, I think if we save that surface, we can feed that into the sprite renderer too, because you can do alignment, custom alignment, facing mode. I think it's custom facing vector. So particles dot sprite facing. Sorry, give me just two seconds. There it is, sprite facing needs to be bound to, ah, I didn't click apply. Um, sprite facing is impact normal. And I think that'll then adhere, there you go. So that's now, all right, that value is definitely wrong. I need to figure out why that is, but that is the technique you would use to figure the rest of this out. Uh, that's the impact normal, not the surface normal. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to do that, but. Uh, I'll need to look into that. But yeah, anyway, the, the rest of it hopefully makes sense in the meantime. Yeah, sorry. Sure, okay. Great, great. Yeah, it's just kind of spinning around, but we don't actually show the spinning thing. It's almost as if we're spinning torches around the object that are kind of shining the particle back onto the surface. Yeah, cool. And then no problems. Let me know. Let me know how it turns out. Okay. No, no problem. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care, mouse. Have a good day. Oh, it said mouse on the caption. <laughs> okay.